Okay. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host? Mike, Buck, get calm. You know they come to the stage. Talk to what you about to hear right here. I second that. Go. You know that that's us when we talk about sports. Giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, they'll listen some more. Oh no, your station not dropping no music. Stripes like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Down four on the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck Mike and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're out the dark. No LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inches, won't cut short. Got the best talk in this all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live all three speaks. Go. And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Bakasha here with the Man Hour. Head over to manhourradio.com and check out the merchandise page. New Beastie Murdy merch has dropped just today within the last 10 minutes here, and we're giving away a Beastie Beanie giveaway tonight. Simply give me hashtag Beastie space and the number of entries that you like to do, minimum of two. That's what that's that 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 is all you gotta do with your loyalty points, and you get a chance to win that Beastie merch. We are giving away tonight. Hour number two, 9.15, before we do talk about the Kansas City Chiefs. But before we get too carried away, I got to tell you guys something. The macaroni and cheese at Chick- Chick-fil-A, overrated. Much like Odell Beckham Jr., much like Patrick Mahomes, and unlike Beastie Combs. What's going on, Beastie? <laughs> what is going on, Buck? What is going on, Man Hour Nation? What the hell did I mean? What do you mean Patrick Mahomes is overrated? Hashtag Bench Mahomes is trending on Twitter, thanks to me. You're you're welcome. I don't think it's trending. I don't think it's it should be. You might might be lonely. Hashtag here. Let let me put the chat right now. Hashtag Bench Mahomes. Oh my god. He is terrible. Why are you benching Mahomes? Okay. Um, let's see here. He he got outthrown in passing yards by Jordan Love. Uh, he had like a 67% QBR. Uh, he has like 27 interceptions on the year. He is he is on pace to get more <laughs> interceptions not, than Jameis. He does not have 20 interceptions on it's, the year, and they just beat the the Green Bay Packers yesterday. with 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 Jordan Love. Congratulations. So, but, all right, so so let me let me get this straight. So they beat the can the Kansas City Chiefs beat the Green Bay Packers. You're like, oh, with Jordan Love, congratulations. Yeah. But the Arizona Cardinals go out and win a game with Colt freaking McCoy. And you're like, oh yeah, they're 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 overrated. They have <laughs> McCoy. They, Who they, said they that? Who said that? You I, I never said that. Never oh, once in my life. I will bring it. I will <laughs> I will get the screenshot off Facebook right now. Okay. You do what you want. Uh, Alpha Rob says, bench the entire Bills offensive line. How about you bench, uh, let, let's bench jo- uh, Josh Allen, the quarterback Josh Allen, not the safety or the linebacker Josh Allen that picked him <laughs> off, sacked him in, got the recovery. So fun fact, yeah. this is the first time in NFL history that Josh Allen has picked off Josh Allen. So And, and, stock, and he sacked Josh <laughs> Allen. And he forced a fumble and recovered the fumble from Josh Allen. Yeah, so Josh Allen was by far the MVP of the game. And when you think Josh yeah. Allen, you're thinking Josh Allen, but it was actually Josh Allen. Right, right. <laughs> the other Josh Allen. Yeah. So we, uh, we call now the that I got Josh you. Allen, Josh Allen Jr. now, since the other guy's his daddy. Pretty much, right? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that, that escalated quickly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Combs, make sure you're on your mic, big guy. You you are sounding a little bit different Uh-oh. here than usual. Uh, I didn't notice that pre-show, but uh, Josh Allen couldn't couldn't block Josh it's Allen. On my mic. Okay, We're all right. My mic. It's all good, guys. But hey, we are giving away that Beastie Beanie tonight. So give to, to give me a hashtag Beastie Space and the number of entries that you like to give. Uh, how you get loyalty points? You might ask. Simply be active in the chat. Drop a like and share this with a couple friends. And every five minutes, you get points for being active in the chat. So the more active you are in the chat, you're interacting with us, gambling, dueling, all that good stuff, it gets you more points. But you know what that doesn't get you more points? And that's Aaron Rodgers sitting sitting on the bench because he did miss Sunday's game versus the Kansas City Chiefs with the whole COVID thing. And we're, we're going to dive deep into this situation here right now. But before we get into that, Combs, I want to ask you this question. Aaron Rodgers is not slated to return till Saturday to the team. Does he yeah. play Sunday, this coming Sunday, or does he miss two straight games? 
Did you see what just happened to the Green Bay Packers yesterday? The defense. There is no way Aaron Rodgers does not play this weekend. Zero really? chance. Okay. There's zero chance. Why would you? Did you see what happened <laughs> <laughs> to the Green Bay Packers this week? I saw that they I mean, had a great defensive game. Uh, Jordan Love missed a couple throws, but everything was right there. And uh, everything you know, was right there. You're reaching uh, right now. I am. You're, you're <laughs> reaching. Like I, I heard somebody today talking about, dude. Did you see the way he was coming off those play action reads? I, I really, that's what you're gonna go with right now. They scored seven points on a Kansas City Chiefs defense that was giving up a ton of points all season long, and they put up seven. Just stop. Yeah. Stop. Jordan Love is not the answer in Green Bay. I can't look personally. I can't wait. Like I was, I, I told you yesterday, I was hopeful that, that Jordan Love would go for 400 and throw four touchdowns because I want to see what would happen there. I wanted to see chaos in Green Bay and how Packers fans would react and if they would turn on Aaron Rodgers real quick. But like, there is no, like, they have zero chance. They are seven and two right now. If Jordan Love is a starter for the rest of the season, they are seven and nine. Really? Yes, absolutely. A hundred and seven. He looked awful. He yeah. wasn't right. Dude, he's been preparing for this moment his entire life, and he looked unprepared. <laughs> and he's been preparing his entire life for it. Like it just at he's he, the kid. The kid is not ready. Not only that, I just don't think he's a, he. Uh, a first round pick. They spent a first round pick on this kid. Well, uh, people also spent first round picks on Lamar Jackson, Josh Ro- Rosen, Tua, uh, Jalen Hurts was a first. No, he was a second sad, sad round pick, but still very high. Yeah, but very high pick. They were, I'm not saying those were good picks either. I mean, you. Yeah. Look, you. Uh, you pick who you pick. And sometimes they pan out and sometimes they don't. There's a lot of first round busts, but really usually the only ones we talk about are what, like the first the, the top five or the top ten yeah, yeah. Of, of being, you know, first round busts. After that, people just talk about, oh, he didn't pan out or oh, he wasn't, you know, he he he, he never amounted to anything in the NFL as opposed to being a bust. This he, this kid is just I mean, he looked lost. He looked like if he went back to college. He would probably have to sit. He yeah. looked bad yesterday. Well, uh, not to defend Jordan Love, because I think he was the stupidest pick in the NFL draft ever, but I'm going to digress on that. Uh, I mean, the, I mean, the first half, the Kansas City Chiefs were blitzing him like crazy because Chiefs defense fucking sucks. Let's be flat out honest. They suck. They're god awful. Uh, I, I bet you the Alabama offense, LSU offense, you and the Kansas State offense, Chiefs, they, uh, they can lick, they can suck a fart out of my butthole for all the I care. First, man. first time all season long, they've won back to back games, and you're like, you're like, oh, the Chiefs suck. They beat the Giants. And Aaron Rodgers without or Aaron Rodgers list Packers, congrats, yeah, fucking lations. So back to Jordan Love. <laughs> now, um, when Jordan Love in the second half, when they actually are started like roll the pocket and some other stuff, and then like you know he was kind of like forced to like play up tempo. I mean, uh, he started to look good. He started to feel like a little bit more settled, and they started to bring more pressure. But what people don't realize is, yet, yeah, yeah, they're bringing pressure, but that makes the quarterback's jobs a hell of a lot easier because you have man-to-man coverage on the outside, and you have Devontae freaking Adams just throw the ball up to this guy. Oh, that's right. He wants to give up an easy jump ball to a five foot five cornerback. I forgot about that. He is he, he's checked out for the season like as well. But yeah, I mean Jordan J- Jordan Love was absolutely terrible, uh, and he is going to get that first round bust pick on him uh, probably for you the rest of his funny, life. I saw something on ESPN too that said who was more disappointing yesterday, Jordan Love or Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes by far because we have an expectation of Patrick Patrick Mahomes and he that, is. That, but that Packers defense is good though, Buck. I don't I mean, care. It's not like you went up. It's not you didn't go up and you didn't play the the Chicago Bears. You didn't go up and you didn't play the the. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other defenses that aren't exactly playing well right now. The, the Jacksonville Jaguars. You didn't go up and play the Detroit Lions. Right. You, you went up and you played the Green Bay Packers. I mean. 
And look, regardless, Aaron Rodgers or not, that's why they only scored seven points because they didn't have Aaron Rodgers. But the fact that your your offense didn't perform well, I they went up against a really good defense. True. So I, I mean, guess. just be happy that Aaron Rodgers wasn't in the game because that W would have been an L. Yeah, uh, maybe, a but I, but but I doubt it. Maybe. But we but would have lost that game thirty-one to thirteen if Aaron Rodgers was in that. We game. will be talking into that into our number two, but we are starting to show off right here about the whole. Uh, we can't say the c word because every time I say the c word, I get shut down. Uh, so <laughs> Combs, let's let's not get canceled. To, to not here, but the reason the topic of the tonight show is the whole Aaron Rodgers and the Rona vaccination, non-vaccination thing, yada, yada, yada. So if you guys don't know, obviously Aaron Rodgers is unvaccinated. He is Im- Im- immunized or however you say that word, right? I- immunization. Basically what, what he does is he took blood proteins from somebody that has had the COVID-19 uh, v- uh, virus and sickness, and they pump that into your bloodstream, and it's supposed to build up anti- like a- antibodies or something to that effect, I guess. Apparently, Joe Rogan had this and a few other people. Uh, so a few things that I want to kind of hit on first, Combs, do you want to take the floor first, or do you want me to take the floor first on this whole Aaron no, Rodgers. You go, you go ahead. That's the first time I actually heard of what he was actually doing. I knew yeah. he was doing something with Joe Rogan. I didn't know it was that. That's, that's right. Kinda uh, yeah, CPA and right. and they also did some type of a uh, horse 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 tranquilizer too. Uh, I'm uh, like I like I'm kind of I'm kind of exaggerating on that, but it was some type of horse protein shot that they used to uh, make horses and dogs better. But basically, huh. when uh when Aaron Rodgers talked on the Pat McAfee show, as you guys know, like he was on there talking about his vaccine status and like all this other, all this other, all this other crap. He come out and he said that there were options for him. There were three major options on the, like on the floor. Two of them were out right off the bat because he was allergic to the vaccine. Um, Combs, do you know what's in the vaccine? Because I sure in the hell don't know what's in the vaccine. I mean, they have all those computer chips and tracking devices and and like and like and like all that. So I, I, I when you sit there and you say I'm allergic to these things, I highly doubt that. Like, are you the only person in all of the world that's allergic to these uh, vaccines? I doubt it. And and like and, and like then he come back and uh, said some, some, some something about the corruption as well uh, of the Pfizer and the um, Moderna. So he like those two are out right off the uh, bat. And then uh, and then obviously the Johnson Johnson got pulled off the uh, shelf uh, shelf as well. So he's like that is out that that is out as well. And then he wants to basically go do this thing that was you know you know like Aaron Rodgers is obviously a very smart guy he he what he went to school at what uh Cal right I think it was mm-hmm. so me like obviously that's a smart school he like he he graduated he divorced his parents and like all this and like this all the crap but with that being said when he says that he was immunized or how, how do you say that word? I'm obviously great with words, right, guys? Uh, he <laughs> he says that, like, basically, I don't think anybody challenged him because they didn't want to sound stupid. I, I would have been, 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 been up there like, what do you mean? You, you like you're like you're immuni- like immunized eyes or whatever the word is like shut your mouth and stop and stop and stop trying to be above everybody else J- just because like you know you don't want to get the shot just don't get the shot but once you make that choice of not getting the shot you have to follow the protocols of the NFL whether you want to be like vaccine shamed or whatever he referred to shut the hell up. Wear your damn mask and do what you got to do to play football. Combs, we talked about this pre-show, and it was about this time last year when Dwayne Haskins went to that strip club without his mask on and didn't follow protocol. Pro- protocol, And we were jumping down, jumping down, down, down his case. Hey, can you just not follow protocol for 16 weeks? Hey, Aaron Rodgers, can you just not follow protocol for nine weeks? Like, come on, man. Shut the hell up. Get over yourself and stop being this pre-Madonna. See, look, 
This oh, man, I can't believe that I'm about to defend Aaron Rodgers, but I'm about to defend Aaron Rodgers. Look, the guy is still to me a complete douche. Like I just I don't like Aaron Rodgers. I think he's just he's he's one of those people that you just want to punch in the face every time it's on TV. But in this aspect, he's a hundred percent correct. He feels the same way about the 19 that we feel. And he feels that he doesn't have to share with anybody, which he shouldn't because, you know, it's your right to keep your medical stuff private. But, you know, that whole act that we have that we have to sign paperwork for every time we go to the doctor that apparently the government doesn't have to follow. Yeah. Um, But (laughs) so... He doesn't want to get the shot and tells everybody he's immunized. Yes, he lied. Yes, he feels like, oh, there's some other medicine. There's people that believe the earth is flat. There's people that believe that, you know, there are aliens among us. There's people that believe that, you know, um, I I don't know, that they're putting microchips in your body when they give you the damn shot. I mean, it's it's crazy how many conspiracy theories there are i myself am not a big believer in it again and we've we've had this conversation i got the shot because you know the one-off chance that i could give it to somebody and they end up dying from it and i don't want to have that on my conscience so yes so i got the shot because there are people that are susceptible to this thing it's very few people but there are people that are susceptible to this thing and not only that but Aaron Rodgers proved to me and kind of proved to the whole world, and everybody's kind of missing the boat on this, right? So, Buck, I went to the Blackhawks game last week. You've seen the pictures on Facebook, right? I did. Great time. You know what I had to do to get into the stadium? Uh, Probably show your vaccine card, right? We had to show our vaccination card. Which is is illegal. And Aubrey. So we had to show our vaccination cards, so we did. And that's how they allowed us into the stadium. Guess who's not checking for people's vaccination cards? The NFL. Right. How does the NFL say, oh, well, we thought he was, he told us he was vaccinated. We, we just, we thought, I, if I have to show my damn card to get in to watch the Blackhawks game, you're telling me the players don't have to show theirs to get in the stadium to play? So uh, there's punishments uh, against it. There's there's all sorts of rules the NFL has implemented. They said if you're if you're unvaccinated and you miss a game due to COVID, you're going to get fined and you're going to get suspended. Well, guess who's not going to get fined and guess who's not going to get suspended? Aaron Rodgers. Because you know why? Because he's freaking Aaron Rodgers. Well, it and is, they're not going to do that to themselves. It is time for me to play devil's advocate here, there. Combs. It is time I, for me to pick up that pencil and drop long. the mic on you. Me, we could be okay. So, so first things first is, uh, so I, I got to go back defending Aaron Rodgers now, just like you did. But even though I'm on the other side of the fence of this, so Aaron Rodgers submitted his immunization file to the NFL. They said this does not qualify as a COVID vaccine shot, and he appealed it. And they said, you know what, you can say what you want, but you are not going to be on the vaccine list. You are on the unvaccinated list. He's like, okay, cool, whatever. This was all in the Pat McAfee interview. I will link it in the description. Uh, so okay. it's like 45 minutes long. So feel feel free to do that. So this is what's wrong with the NFL and the whole political stance. So I did see a comment here. Uh, I believe it was from Alpha Rob. He says, it is funny that people hated the vaccine when Trump was in Trump was in." Trump was in office, and now since Joe Biden's in la la in office, it's a it's 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 the greatest thing <laughs> it's ever. It's a different yeah, story, for right? A different time. Yeah. So so I, I Which definitely he hits on that too in that interview, by the way. Yeah. So so the so the NFL knew that he was unvaccinated the whole time. The Green Bay Packers knew he was unvaccinated the whole time. Per the NFL stance, whether you want to be on the logistics side of it or not, every company has their own has their own way of saying. You you gotta do this this and this. I don't care what the government says, right? You 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 get to do this this and this. 
So when Aaron Ryder was was in these all these press conference interviews without a mask, when he was boarding the plane without a mask, when he was in the locker room with without a mask, why didn't the NFL step in and say, "Hey, you're breaking our rules. You should be fine. You should be this, this, and this," right? But they didn't do that. Why? Because he's Aaron freaking Rodgers, right? And when you suspend a guy making that much money, makes the NFL that much good, right? Uh, then, then you know you see things. happen happening now i want to piggyback on what you said earlier if jordan loves would have had a great game 400 yards right air Rodgers would probably be suspended for the next three or four three three or four games let's just be flat out honest about that but this is also on prima donna aaron Rodgers himself if he knows the rules because you know he made a very good statement that he studies you know he studied before jeopardy he studied before you know doing all the covid shit yada 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 right if he if he studies so much and he knows the rules, why isn't he wearing his mask when he knows he's supposed to? Why is he not, you know, wearing a mask at a Halloween party that what I think he hosted, right? I mean, he should be wearing a mask at his like in his own house if he's having people over. That's just a mandate that the NFL has put. We ridiculed Dwayne Hassens for going to a strip club after a win and and getting COVID, but yet Aaron Rodgers were like, oh, maybe. Maybe his way is thinking is right. Maybe he's this, this, and this. Maybe it's the new world order, that right? That Dwayne Haskins thing. That Dwayne Haskins thing was during the height of of the whole lockdown and during the height of quarantine right. and during the height of we didn't even have a shot out there yet. That was a completely different scenario. They weren't even allowing fans into the stands. Now, now we want players to get to 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 be vaccinated however if you look what's around the players buck what what happens when a when a team scores what do you hear in the background uh i think i hear fans in the background if i'm not mistaken yeah, like, like and joe you know, buck most saying stadiums hold about hold, hold about thirty thousand fans don't they easily yeah yeah and none of them are wearing masks or, nope. or doing anything but they're jumping around screaming spitting you know th- splashing beer that they just put their mouths all over right all yeah. over people as they're yeah, jumping yeah, up and yeah. down but but that's that's cool you know why that's cool uh because they make money oh. off of it oh. so what you're saying so is I, the... i'm so tired of the of this narrative of this oh you you got you got to do this or you got to do that i live in a freaking state the only state by the way the only state, Governor Pritzker, you freaking moron, you fat bastard. Wow. <laughs> the only state east of Mississippi that has a statewide mask mandate. The only one. Mm, interesting. And 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 where and we have a mask mandate. But you know what? When I go into places, if they don't have a sign up that says I must wear a mask, you know what I don't do? I don't wear a mask. Yeah. Have well, I so, had so, sure. So hang, hang, hang but on. I don't wear a mask if I don't have to. You're following the rules though, right? Yeah, for the yeah, most part. I right? mean, you know, if I go if I go into place, you know, half the time I got the mask. It's on my face, but it's usually like under my chin, tucked under. And I right. Don't really but you're following the rules. Like, if the sign says wear a mask, you wear a wear wear a mask. Correct. Then why is not Aaron Rodgers following the rules? I I agree with you. Because he's I'm a with bitch you on that part. I'm with you on that part. The NFL should suspend him for the rest of the season. The Packers yeah. should suck for the rest of the yeah. season. Go Bears! Go Bears! Right? <laughs> but, but, but I just don't... Look, the Aaron Rodgers thing with what he's saying, I don't... Look, I don't like Aaron Rodgers as a person. I don't... You know, I, I love the chaos that, that ensued all off season with, is he going to come back to Green Bay? Is he not? I can't wait for the time where he doesn't come back to Green Bay and they're just mediocre again. Because, look, they've struck gold it, twice in a row with their quarterbacks with back to back for yeah. hall of fame quarterbacks. It doesn't, it's not going to happen a third time. I, I, I guarantee you it's not happening a third time. I bet you it, they it, trade for Mitchell Trubisky for Jordan love and Mitchall Trubisky is a hall of fame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hall of fame quarterback. Yeah. Comes out and just every time he plays against Justin Fields, just <laughs> destroys the bears. Yeah. Right. That, that would be about on par for the, what the bears are, but this this Aaron Rodgers thing, I just I'm with him on how he handled the the cancel culture aspect of things. I'm right. with him on on what he said when it came down to, you know, look, I don't care about the politics of this whole thing. Politics are crooked on both sides, whether you're Democrat or Republican, you're crooked. And I'm not going on CNN. I'm not going on Fox. I don't care. 
it's you know i am who i am i agree with him there he 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 doesn't need to conform to anybody's opinion anybody who wants to get the the shot by all means go get it go yeah. do what you need to do yeah all those who don't want to get it by all means okay get... you know what i don't i don't get the flu shot people get it every year i don't get the flu shot at all as right. a matter of fact <laughs> the last time that i got the flu shot was because we had a newborn baby in the house i got the flu shot and know what happened a week and a half later i got the damn flu you that's know when just, the last time i got the flu was was the last time that i got the damn flu shot i haven't had the flu since that's just a like, coincidence just, shut your I, mouth that's well, just a coincidence yeah that's what you said what'd you do you you just went and got the flu shot didn't you no that's what my wife says <laughs> <laughs> and she's always right i don't need google like when i have her i'm totally yeah, kidding I, i'm totally look, kidding uh and, 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 and i don't get that shot you know what you don't do you don't mandate me to get that shot and you know what that 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 sickness does kills thirty thousand americans a year yeah more than covid uh sorry did i say that my 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 my, my bad uh oh, so uh, so <laughs> so uh so i see a lot of comments attacking me suit boss drew havoc rob michelle i see you guys all those comments you know what drew, uh, suit boss said does a sign do, do, does a sign on the air or is there a sign on the air, airplane that says wear a mask um it doesn't have to their suit boss because it is a team chartered plane Therefore, it is a NFL funded flight, right? Therefore, NFL rules apply. Therefore, don't need a goddamn sign to say put your mask on. It's common sense. It's it's in the contract that they signed. It's in the players' association contract that they signed. I mean, come on, you you guys are absolutely ridiculous. Uh, Combs, defend me here, man. Look, I don't. This whole notion of look, I I get it. The the oh the people will be like oh well there's there's numbers out there there's there's things that show that this thing is is real and blah blah I, I get it but you know what else there is there's numbers to to refute the numbers there's there's research to refute the research but people they just want to believe what they want to believe and I'm fine with that whatever you believe if you believe this thing is real and you're gonna die and you just want to stay in your house. You're going to turn into a zombie if you go and somebody breathes <laughs> on you with COVID. Fine. Believe what you want to believe. I don't care. It's the same thing with religion. I don't care what you believe. But don't make me believe it. If I don't want to believe it, I shouldn't have to believe it. I don't have to believe it. Hey, people get mad at me all the time when we have the, 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 you know, the talk about COVID or the talk about religion. Like, my beliefs don't have to be your beliefs. I had somebody tell me, I got so mad today. Somebody told me, oh, well, you know, God won't bring you to anything that you, he can't get you through. Really? Then how to come so many people commit suicide? Uh, I was going to say facts, but I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if I should. I, just, I, don't, <laughs> I just don't get it. Like people say what they yeah. want to believe and that's fine. Believe what you want to believe. Believe in a higher power. Believe in God by all means. I respect you for what you believe in. So but don't come at me and try to make me believe it. I'm going to believe what I believe. And that's, that's just it. That's, that's why we're all human beings. That's why we all have a right to do what we want to do. And Aaron Rodgers ha absolutely has a right to not be vaccinated. Just like any player in the NFL has a right to not be vaccinated, but they also have the right to not have to share that with anybody. It's personal. It's HIPAA. There's a freaking law. That says that he doesn't have to share it with anybody. Actually, I believe the vaccines have to be shared because you have to show your vaccine <sighs> status to be in school. So there's there's no it, difference. It, yeah, the, it's still it's still a medical choice that is protected. That it doesn't. The, you read the HIPAA manual. It doesn't say oh, except for. I mean, it might now. They might have changed the <laughs> law. I might say it now, but yeah. Read one that happened before COVID. It never said. Oh, you have to share it with it. No, you actually had to sign a paperwork and say, hey, can can anybody else call in and get any of your medical records? If you didn't put anybody on that list, nobody but you could call in and get your medical records. Now you're supposedly you have to share it with everybody because of this freaking this, this, this democratic disease that we have. Get the hell out of here. Wow. OK, Shut way to get canceled. Democratic disease there, Combs. But you uh, were you were destroying my transition because you said, okay, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe I can cry or lie, cry, 
<laughs> but anyways, the Cleveland Browns guys flexed on the entire NFL by beating down the Cincinnati Bengals. Yes, the I and mighty Cincinnati Bengals. They cut Odell Beckham Jr. a day or two before the game. So, Combs, are the Cleveland Browns better without OBJ? Yes. Duh. And the numbers show that they're better without OBJ. Look, the, the, the guy found in his first three seasons, the guy was amazing. 35 touchdowns in his first three seasons. He was great with the New York Giants when they were really good, when they were in the height of, of being a competitive team. And then all of a sudden they lost players. They didn't have a number two, and he couldn't be a number one. The guys found the end zone 16 times since. 16 times the guys found the end zone since. And that's in five seasons. That's an average of three per year. So you went from scoring 11 plus touchdowns a year to three. You're just not look in the lifespan of, of NFL players. Just isn't that long. Like, especially wide receivers and running backs. Now you're entering your net, your, your eighth or your ninth season entering next year. And not, not to mention you're a freaking headache. You're a headache that nobody wants to deal with. You have a guy when Baker Mayfield, when Baker Mayfield <laughs> thinks that you're a clown, you're probably a clown because <laughs> Baker Mayfield is probably one of the biggest clowns out there. But when he goes at you like that, I mean, look, I'm not gonna lie, I laughed. I laughed at his press conference when he said, when he said they said, why did they kick you out of practice? He's like, well, I was searching. I've seen all the commercials. They say Baker lives here. I was trying to find his bedroom. I couldn't find it, but I was close. So then they kicked me out. <laughs> Jeez, that was... I was cracking up. Look, I, OBJ is not a Hall of Famer. He's a receiver that had a good few years in the first three years of his career. He hasn't been anything since. Nothing. Yeah. And I'm... he hasn't been anything since he signed with Cleveland. And he barely gets on the field. He's always hurt. Right, so, right, right. Yeah, yes, they're better off without him because they don't have the headaches. They don't have to use up a roster spot for a guy who's just going to end up in IR in three weeks anyway. So, <laughs> yes, yes, they're better off without him. All right, guys. So let me uh, stand up here, Combs, and collect my thoughts because I'm about to lay it on you. First of all, check out this new Man Hour hoodie I got. Freaking awesome, right? So, guys, Odell Beckham Jr., has been proven to be a cancer not once, not twice, but three times now in his NFL career. Uh, Combs, you're a, you're a baseball fan, right? Three strikes and, you, and you're out? Well, guess right. Yeah. Three strikes and you're out, Mr. OBJ. Nobody wants you. What are you What are you known for? You are known for a catch that happened six years ago. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, other than that, what have you done? Oh, absolutely nothing. When you tore your ACL last year, the Cleveland Browns looked like the damn near the best team in the NFL. They went to Pittsburgh, beat the Pittsburgh Steelers on their home field for their first playoff win since, what, 1995? The minute you are out of town, they look like the best team in the NFL again. How are you not the reason why the Cleveland Browns suck for the last three or four weeks? How are you not the reason why Baker Mayfield is throwing stupid-ass interceptions? How are you not the reason why Landry Jones wants to stab you in your throat every time you look at him in your stupid bleak blonde purple <laughs> hair like you uh, seriously you are the ugliest looking dude i've ever seen in my whole entire life and i look oh at freaking God. combs every day and just you are the worst wide receiver in the nfl i will take tyreek hill over you any day of the week even though tyreek hill bounces balls up in the air and throws them to the other team 50 percent of the time this year damn you kansas kansas city chiefs guys Odell Beckham Jr. has been overrated since his, his since his third year. Combs, what he got like thirteen hundred yards as you know, like average like the first three years, right? I don't mm -hmm. think he's broken a thousand yards since. Hell, this year he has like two hundred yards in seven games. You know who else has two hundred yards passing or receiving? Mm -hmm. Every other Ooh. starter in the NFL has at least three hundred yards catching. 
minimum of yeah. six a minimum of six 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 say I mean, six, his six first games. game back he was the leading receiver when he came back I, who else did I they have because it was against the bears <laughs> and who else so, did they have landry jones was out freaking their yeah. tied and was out chubb and hunt were both hurt well, that's what i'm saying i yeah. mean they they were they were targeting him he did lead but he he led the team with only like 73 yards receiving but i i mean he odell beckham did have a game but he Look, the guy, and I'm not going to go off on the tangent that you did. I'm not going to call him the ugliest looking dude I've ever seen, even though I sit across from Buck every damn day. <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and tell him, you know, and, and go off on the tangent that you did. But I am going to say that Odell Beckham, again, 35 touchdowns in his first three seasons. 35 touchdowns in his first three seasons. The man has 16 in the last five. Yeah. That the man is not the same wide receiver he was in the first three years. And to be honest with you, the the lifespan in the NFL of a wide receiver nowadays is, is five to seven years. You know what Odell Beckham is? He is a modern day Dion Branch. Ooh. He was good within a system, and then all of a sudden he left the system, and he, he's not the same player. He's not the same player at all. I would go Odell out on Beckham a limb and say he was not only the same player. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm uh, just saying, he's he's not the same player, and he's a headache in the locker room. So if a team wants to step away from that, why not step away from that? And again, if a guy like Baker Mayfield, if a guy like Baker Mayfield is made to look like the bigger person, because Baker Mayfield is one of the biggest clowns you'll ever meet. If a guy like Baker Mayfield is made to look like the bigger person, you should probably check the way you're acting. Yeah, a hundred percent correct on that one, 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 one hundred, one hundred percent. But before we get too carried away Aaron, and we bring Kevin on with the real bottom line with Kevin Collier, the Cincinnati Bengals, Combs, we saw them clicking on all cylinders. They were leading the leading the NFC North, and then two weeks happened to go. They dropped a big L versus the uh, Jets. We're like, oh, it's just a fluke. Mike, Mike White lit them up for four hundred yards. It's just a fluke. It's just one one of those games. Well, then the Cleveland Browns light him up for 400 yards a, a again. Many of us, uh, let me throw Graham Wallace under the bus here, back it up and drive over again. He had the Cincinnati Bengals in the top seven of his power rankings two weeks ago. Now I'm sure he's going to be like 15, 16, probably even 20. Did we jump on the Cincinnati bang Bengals bandwagon too early? Um... I, I mean, I guess. I mean, I've always thought that they were a 9-7 and seven team, and I still think that they're a 9-7 and seven team. I'm not going to back off of that. I didn't jump off of it when they, you know, the won a couple of games that they maybe shouldn't have where they weren't the favorite or whatever the case is. But, no, I don't think that we hopped on it too early. What are they now? They're 5-4? Five and five and four, uh, Yeah, I think so. Something like that. Yep. Yeah. So they're 5-4. and four. They, you know, they've got uh, – a a tough stretch ahead of them with the Raiders, Steelers, Chargers, and Niners. So it's it's not going to get any easier for them. But look, I mean, they beat the Baltimore Ravens pretty handily. They made the Baltimore Ravens look silly in Baltimore. Um, you know, they played really tough against the Green Bay Packers. They they beat the hell out of the Pittsburgh Steelers. So this is a team that look maybe they just hit hit a funk maybe they just you know you're not gonna we didn't think they were gonna be 17 and 0 or 16 and 1 did we eh. you know so so they lost a couple of games one game they probably shouldn't have and you know now they get rolled by by a pretty damn good cleveland browns team so it 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 happens and you know uh joe burrow did not have his best game i mean he did not look very good yesterday versus cleveland so no, I don't. I don't think you hopped on a tour. I think if you hopped on it at all, thinking they were going to be anything more than a nine and seven wild card team that gets beat in the first round, you're probably fooling yourself anyway. Yeah. So when I sit back and I look what has happened, I I, I, I will be the first one to admit I jumped on that Cincinnati Bengals band bandwagon like i was beating that drum i'm like they are going to go into the playoffs they're going to get a first round win because of this this and this but do you know why they're they will not be that now combs let me let me get some knowledge for you here the reason why they will not do that this year is because they did not sit joe burrow 
his rookie year and let him learn underneath a veteran oh quarterback in the name of Andy Dalton. If if Andy Dalton would have stayed at Cincinnati, Joe Burrow would have learned how to be really a professional. Just go there? And therefore, he did sit his rookie year. And he the, played two games and then he tore his ACL. He, and he played, played like nine, wasn't it? You shut your damn he mouth. He played like nine. But no, if like he seven. if he would have sat oh behind Andy Dalton, <laughs> learn how to prepare for a game, learn how to read defenses, and do this other stuff, I mean, they would be balling Andy right Dalton now. Was on the Cowboys last year. I said if they if they would have kept Andy Dalton and let and sat and sat oh. Joe Burrow for a year behind him. Hey, and he wouldn't have been hurt, so he so he wouldn't have took five five years off of his career. No, uh, instead Andy Dalton would have been dead. It, it, would you rather have a forty year old quarterback dead or your twenty two year old quarterback dead? Oh my God. I mean, Andy Dalton got killed last year well, anyways. I, I mean. I don't know how you get on these tangents about these rookie quarter. We we've defeated this theory. Just Supos came and destroyed your theory. I don't care on the show. The Combs and eye it, test tells it, me that J- Joe Burrow should have sat out of here. The the, Com- the Combs eye test tells you you're a moron. That's what the Combs eye test tells you. You you, you know what else tells no you something? No way that you think that Joe Burrow had a one bad game this year because he didn't sit last. Year. Yeah, because he didn't know how to Shut prepare. Up. He didn't know how to prepare for, for a division rival. That's what it is, Colm. Sorry, man. Guys, we are up against the first break on the other side of the break. We got the infamous Kevo. So if you sure to follow him at the real Kev underscore zero on the old Twitter machine, Joe Burrow should have sat a year and he would have been Super Bowl champion this year. Look at Patrick, Pat, 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 Patrick, Patrick Holmes did it. You know, Aaron Rodgers did it. I mean, facts are facts, guys. Patrick Holmes did not do it his second year. Uh, he went to the AFC championship game and lost because D Ford's a piece of shit. But we digress on that. We digress on that. Uh, Guys, we'll be right back here on the Man Hour. Stay tuned. (laughs) Unbelievable. Nation brought to you by Brooks Roofing and Siding. Contact them at 812-868-7663 or online at brooksroofingin.com. Brooks Roofing and Siding, protection you need when nature strikes. 
And welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckeyes with Brandon Combs. Now, you can find us on Twitter at manhour underscore buck and, of course, manhour underscore combs. If you miss any part of the show whatsoever, you can find us on podcast forum on iHeart, iTunes, of course, uh, Spotify. Mix that up. I know we do the other way around. But also, guys, we're also on Good Pods as well now. So give us, so head over to Good Pods, search for Man Hour Sports Talk, and you can rate each episode. So be sure to give us a ranking and let us know how we're doing. You can also subscribe to us on the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Man Hours. We do upload clips each and every day. They're 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We are giving away a beanie tonight. So use hashtag Beastie, space the number of raffle tickets that you'd like to give away. Uh, for that beanie giveaway. We'll be giving that away here in about 20 minutes here on the Man Hour. So head over to YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour and be sure to get entered into that raffle. So, Combs, we've had a great talk about Aaron Rodgers, some o, some Odell Beckham Jr., some Joe Burrows, and how he should have sat a year. And it is time to bring on one of my favorite segments of the entire week here, and that's the real bottom line with Kevo. Are you ready to do that, Combs? Let's do it. All right. I always like talking with Kevo. And there he is, right? There's the man, Kevo himself, at the real Kev underscore zero on Twitter machine. Kev, what's going on tonight, man? What's going on, fellas? Glad to be back. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, so uh, guys, if you don't know this, Kev joins us every Monday night about 845 East Coast time here at YouTube.com for slash, uh, slash man hour. But this is this is all about him. Kev, where can they people find your show at? Wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, all the radios. Um, you can find us on Twitter at the bottom underscore pod. Find me on Twitter at the real Kev underscore zero. You know, the normal stuff, the bottom line podcast with your boy. That's where we at. Everywhere. Yeah. I was listening to it last week and I caught myself just like wanting to like yell at you. But like, why are you saying okay. that? It just, but then I'm like, <laughs> man. I wonder what people think when I say some stuff that I really truly believe. And, you know, that's just what sports is all about. As we can go back and forth all we want, but the real bottom line is it's your, it is your opinion at the end of the day. So what is our first topic for tonight? Well, well, before we get into it, um, speaking of things that we believe and stuff, you know, I, I heard you on your little, your tangent about Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Um, and I wanted to ask, um, Combs, I think it was. Combs, you said that you thought that the Bengals were nine and seven. Do you think that they're a nine and seven team or do you think their record's gonna be nine and seven? Because there's a difference there. Um Yeah, I think they're about a nine and seven team. Okay, I, so. I I think they're just right now they're still finding themselves. I think they're still a couple pieces away from being a, you know, like, you know, a, a twelve and five or thirteen and four, which is, you know, what we would consider a, a, a real contender in the AFC. Yeah, they so and the reason why I wanted I asked for you to make that discrepancy um, is because being a nine and seven team and having a nine and seven record are two different things, right? So yeah. um, when you play a fourth place schedule, right, as they right. do, um, it tends to look well, look good, um, and I mean, but but we 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 can't give. There's no fault on them for losing to the Browns, right? Did it look pretty? No, but. We were talking about the Browns being a Super Bowl contender earlier this year. Um, there's no fault in that. Did they lose to the Jets? Yeah. But the Bills lost to the Jaguars this week. The uh, Packers almost lost to the Lions this year. Uh, and the hmm. Ravens almost lost to the Lions this year. Um, so, Hey, Kev, quick check. Have the Lions won a game yet? The Lions? No. Oh, sorry about uh, so 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 just to take Kev's <laughs> just to take Kev's word there, the Lions record might be zero and seventeen, but they are still an eleven win team. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that's not the case. What? <laughs> I like what you did there. But Come on, a, man. That's not the case. I, I, um, but they but they play hard. They play hard and they play tough. Yeah. Um, and they play hard enough for eleven team. wins. They didn't play, play very hard against the Eagles. No, they did not. They did not. But <laughs> anyway, I wanted to really I, – I didn't get to hear the conversation that you guys had. I've been really, like, trying to figure out where what I feel regarding Aaron Rodgers and what's been going on. And I've come to this. This man needs to be fined. This man needs to be suspended. This man needs to be made an example of. It is no secret that – Aaron Rodgers is a bit of a – it's a good word here. Pussy? Uh, bitch? Uh, no. <laughs> I, was, I was just going to say 
<laughs> um, he's a bit of a quack. Um, he's yeah. definitely a space cadet, right? Like, it's no secret that Aaron Rodgers thinks a little bit different than a lot of people. But I don't care what he says on Pat McAfee's show on Tuesdays or what he tells the media. My man lied. Like, just because you didn't come out and say the words, I'm vaccinated, doesn't mean you weren't lying because lying's all about the intent. And his intent was to mislead and help us make us believe that he was vaccinated. Carson but he believes he's vaccinated. He believes he's immunized. No, he believes he's immunized, but not vaccinated. Yeah. Carson Wentz is not vaccinated. Carson Wentz wears a mask on the sideline. Carson Wentz wears a mask every time he does any type of media things at all. Cole Beasley, as much as we can crap shit on him, he's not vaccinated. He wears a mask when he's supposed to wear a mask. Aaron Rodgers is out here maskless. Aaron Rodgers is referring to people unvaccinated as those guys when he says things like, I'm not going to judge those guys. It's a personal decision. The whole the whole time, and then of course he does the whole thing where it's like, oh, I petitioned to the league to, and I I gave them five hundred pages of research about what I did and how it blah 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 this that and the third. Um, which by the way, who was reporting in Green Bay? Because this is ridiculous that nobody like knew about this. Right, like, this wasn't like something that got out. But anyway, um, yeah, get get out of here, get out of here. I need this man. Like this is ridiculous because it's less about. You know, I get it. He's allergic to uh, the thing in the Pfizer and the Moderna. He's allergic to something in there. So allegedly. It's already, uh, uh, allegedly. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so that's already out of the question. Cool. So now all he's got his J&J, blah, 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 whatever the case is. Okay. If you don't want to take the vaccine, that's fine. But you got people. Imagine, imagine it being me or you. And you've got the vaccine. Just because you have the vaccine doesn't mean you can't get COVID. Right. He doesn't. Okay, but he's been immunized. He'd like you to believe he has the vaccine. We're eating, we're in the quarterback rooms and we're doing X, Y, and Z. And if it wasn't for the fact that he got COVID, so obviously his immunization is not as pure as he thought it was, um, we wouldn't we wouldn't even know. And it's not like he was like, Hey, you know, tell people close to me, hey guys, I'm not vaccinated. It's just that this is just purely like we're gonna hide this. And the Packers knew this, and they need to be fine too. But Kevin, like, like, so I, I get what you're saying, and I get the, you know, he's, he, you know, apparently, like you said, apparently he's not as immunized as he thought because he still got COVID. Well, I got the vaccination back in April, and then in August I got COVID. So the vaccine isn't as as you know, foolproof as they think it is. That's not what I'm so, sorry. So sorry. so there's there's like there are factors to it. And I came out, you know, earlier on the show, I'm not sure if you were a listener or not, but I said, look, I'm okay with with the interview that he had. I'm not gonna kill him for the stuff that he said with you know uh this being you know politically driven and he's not going on CNN or he's not going on Fox so he doesn't really care to take a side. I I'm okay with that stuff, but I'm with you. I mean, if, if the NFL has a rule on this and I've, been, I've always been a big fan of it. Like you've got to suspend your superstars too. You can't just let your superstars walk, but, but then, you know, two weeks later, you're going to, you're going to suspend, you know, a, a right tackle from Cleveland or something, but you're not going to suspend Aaron Rodgers. That to me just sends the wrong message. We said that earlier. I'm okay if they find or suspend them because, now they said if if you're not vaccinated and you still come down with COVID, you're going to get a fine, and or or suspended or or both or something like that. Like I'm with it. Whatever that punishment is, is that he needs to get it now because he's not vaccinated and he caught COVID. So he needs to have non payable, non you know he doesn't get paid for for game or whatever the punishment is. Needs to happen, Aaron Rodgers. I'm 100 percent with you. On okay, pause, pause, pause. You guys are absolutely beating up the wrong bush. This is all on the NFL's fault here, just because Carson Carson Wentz and Coles Beely both are not vaccinated, openly not vaccinated, and they're wearing masks on the sidelines. Right? Aaron Rodgers submitted paperwork to the NFL, and, and the NFL said you are not vaccinated. You 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 are not you are not under our vaccinated vaccinated guidelines. 
So with yeah, that being said, rules. Yeah, so with that being said, it is the NFL and the players association's fault that he was not wearing a mask, that he was not doing this, this, and this. So how is that Aaron Rodgers' fault if they're not enforcing their own rules? No, I think you're misinterpreting what I'm saying, Buck. I said he needs to be fined and he needs to be um he needs to be suspended because they should have done that week one when he didn't do it week two when he did do it week three when he didn't do it how about week six when he didn't do it or week seven maybe maybe. but now now it needs to happen regardless of when you do it because guess what like the point is you have to you have to understand um you have to understand that like what you do sends a message Aaron Rodgers just spent this entire offseason trying to portray the message that, hey, I know how the NFL works. I know how the business of the NFL works, but guess what? I'm different, right? He said, I don't know if I want to show up. They drafted my replacement or, you know, whatever that whole situation went <laughs> down. I'm going to hold out, but not really hold out. I'm going to get what Jeez. I want. Like the NFL is a business and every player gets treated the same way. Even the superstars, Bill Belichick is best at it. I'm going to trade you a year too early as opposed to a year too late. But Aaron Rodgers spent a whole offseason saying, hey, you know what? No, I'm different. So instead, I'm going to hold out and make you do what I want, like go trade for Randall Cobb and X, Y, and Z. And now I think Aaron Rodgers has this mindset that, like, I get it, but I'm Aaron Rodgers. And it's like, no, no, no. But are we surprised that he's got that mentality of that he's better than everybody else? He's had that mentality his entire life and his entire career. I understand. But being better than me on the football field, and being held to a different standard than me when it comes to lives, human lives, with rules that are costing people money. And 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 you can, regardless of how you feel about the rules, the rules are the rules. Right. I can disagree as much as I want, but if I need to wear a mask because I'm not vaccinated to go to work, then guess what I'm going to do to go to work? I'm going right. to put a mask on, whether I like it or not, and I'm going to get the fuck used to it. So, yeah. so Kev... I understand what you're saying, that the NFL needs to do something now, right? Well, basically what the NFL did by not doing the first nine weeks of the season, it is kind of like when you allow a, when you allow your kid to stand on a chair and like, and he's jumping around and like dancing like, oh, that's cute, ha, 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 sit down, man. And then he does this more like, ah, oh, that's cute, man, ha, ha, right? And then, like, and then you do that for two, three weeks in a row, and then, like, the next time he does that, you get all pissed off at him. Sit your ass down, boy. You do what the fuck I say, right? Uh, well, Dad, you just laughed at me last week for the same for for the same, same thing. Why would I not think it's not okay now? And you're right. You're right. That's called enablement. I'm going to give you a, I'm gonna tell you guys a little story. I have a friend, a good friend of mine. Um, not going to say names because I don't really need, I'm already, I'm already kind of putting this business out there. Okay. I've got a friend. He's in a relationship. Okay. Well, his girlfriend tends to have a habit of being disrespectful to him. Things like disrespecting the job he has or disrespecting the kind of money he makes, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And he talks to me about it and he vents to me about it and it becomes like a, he's really upset. And it's like, yeah, I understand you're upset now, but you let this, you let this go on for two, three, for two years. So now this is why this continues to happen. Okay. And this is exactly. And so part of it, while, yeah, it's on her to relax. Part of it is on him because he, he let this go for two years and she got comfortable in, oh, I can just say this because it's okay. Same thing. So you're absolutely right. The NFL is to blame or not I'm not saying they're to blame, but they do have some fault as well because they should have noticed week one um or week two or so on and so forth. I don't know whose job it is. Just like all the fines the NFL hands out, like I think uh who I'm a Cowboys fan, so I read somewhere that CeeDee Lamb has been fined five out of six weeks or five out of seven weeks for an untucked jersey. Like whoever whoever's job it is to like, <laughs> okay, who's getting fined for what this week didn't do their job in regards to that. But Aaron Rodgers has a point in that COVID has, or the, the vaccine has become so political that I feel like people are even scared to ask the questions. And so when it's like, hey, he doesn't have a mask on, but, you know, I, I, he said he's mean. I, I'll just, you know, whatever. Like, I don't know who has access to the records, who's allowed to have them, how that process works. So before I put that on the NFL, I need to know more about what the process is. The only thing that I can say is that there's a personal responsibility 
to follow the rules and guidelines that are put in place for well, the safety of the whole. Kev, I, I had a little. I went to the Blackhawks game last week, right? Took took Michelle, took Aubrey to the Blackhawks game, and the three of us went in. And before we got in the door, you know what the doorman stopped and asked us, "Can I see your vaccination card?" Yeah, cool. Show him the vaccination card. Let us in the building. How hard is that for the NFL to do? <laughs> How hard is it for the for the NFL to say, "Hey, if you're going to enter this area, you got to be vaccinated. Show me your card." Or you how about this? Be fine, show me your card. Or how about this? It, we talked about Kyrie Irving what two two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Main shit. It's it's hard because there's so much money that goes into this. Like at the end of the day, whether you and your family go to that Blackhawks game or not does not affect their bottom line. But whether, you know, um, Kyrie Irving plays or doesn't play, I mean, we're seeing this year, it's probably not really affecting the Brooklyn. How, Nets how about when line. Aaron Rodgers plays at, at Lambeau Field and he throws a touchdown pass and you've got 30,000 unmasked people jumping up and down, screaming, sharing spit, sharing saliva, throwing beer up and down at their mouth. It's okay because we're outside. And that's okay, <laughs> but that's because they make money. They yeah, make no, the yeah, team I, money. I, I, it, it's, it's, there's so many different states and so many... It's different if it's like, hey, you can't come in this one specific arena as a fan unless you're got your unless you're vaccinated. But it's like, you know, we see the 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 NBA trying to fight through this little, okay, well, who can't play in what arenas and this, that, and the third because of that whole like we like you said, like we talked about a couple of weeks ago. I think it's just a different I mean, he is one of the superstars in the league. Is he the face? No, but I don't think that the NFL has one face. I think the NFL, the face of the league is probably a good eight to 12 guys and he's one of them um and so i it's hard right the the nf the the, these big leagues which are basically just companies conglomerates ways to make money don't want to do anything that could possibly hinder the money they make they also don't want to do anything they, they try to stay out of the political spotlight as much as possible and when you say you have to be vaccinated like the raiders you have to be vaccinated to enter this stadium you're saying what side you're on and they don't want to show what side they're on because all that does is is open the door for scrutiny and open the door for um, criticism um, and, and, and cause uh, conflicts of interest. And they don't want to do that. They just want to play the even, play the straight arrow, stay on the fence. We're not going to give too much this way or that way because that's the best way to just keep to just keep going. All right, Kev. Let's let's move on here. Like we have about five minutes left with the real bottom line. What's the second topic of the night? So um, most people, I'm looking at looking at most people who who blame Odell Beckham for his whole situation Me. with the Browns. Um, personally, I feel like this is one of those things where like the only the Browns can mess something like this up. Um, and what I mean by that is, I mean, I you know, his 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 dad put up the vi- or put up the video, but he obviously didn't edit the video. He just put it up um of Odell being open for 11 straight minutes. Um and as a wide receiver, you can't like be half in, you know, like you you can't be like I'm just going to come out here and run my routes and that's it. You know, you kind of got to have some enthusiasm, so is he doing his job to help the situation? No. But you can't, I mean, you can't blame him. And you can't really blame Baker either. He's playing an offense that wants to run the ball. Wide receivers aren't necessarily the most adamant, like, blockers. They're not going to be excited to block too much. And he just came off of an injury. He's ready to get back. Like, I'm ready to get out there and make plays. Not get overthrown here. Or you threw it behind my back here. Or you're throwing it where I'm about to get smacked, so I'm dropping the ball. because I mean, dropping the ball, you shouldn't be dropping the ball. But it's like you're putting it. To where as soon as I catch it, this man's about to light me up in front of me. Like, I'm doing this and nothing. Like, you, you Instead of – it's not like you're not throwing it to him to go throw a 15-yard, you know, up the seam to David Njoku. You're not throwing it to him and you're throwing picks and you're fumbling the football. Like, that. that's where it gets frustrating. And Odell Beckham didn't say anything to the media. He didn't say anything to any teammates. He said he, – he, he, he kept it internalized. You can see it on his body language because he's kind of emotional. He's a, he's a bit of a, a drama, drama queen. Um, but he didn't say anything out loud to like cause this controversy. He was just like, I'm just going to come out here and do my thing. And it's irritating, but it is what it is. 
And his dad kind of took it upon himself to say, we need to get Odell out of here. And this is why you kind of got the whole free old, free Odell movement, because at the end of the day, man, you had somebody with all this talent and look what, look what you've done. You squandered, you squandered it. How, how did they squander it when a, like if a player doesn't want to be there and he's not all in, why would I want to throw you the ball? So you can drop it 10% of, uh, of the Beckham time. Beckham never asked to be traded to Cleveland. Okay. Nobody wants to go to Cleveland. Okay. Well, then he shouldn't have raised a big a big deal in New York. He shouldn't have proposed to the kicking tee. He shouldn't have done what he done in New York. Like, Correct. I mean, that is his they fault. Said, he got sent to Cleveland to, Cleveland to die. die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He got sent to Cleveland to die, but like, he still had stuff in the tank. Did he? And absolutely. I He's mean, been he, hurt he, twice he and hurt. has what thirty five catches calm since his since his he, first three years. He's he's uh, been hurt. Yeah, not yeah I many. think you said the stat at the end, uh, 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 right before I. It's came the on. touchdowns for me that gets. I mean, he was averaging eleven touchdowns his first three seasons. He's averaged three since. But this is a guy that when you traded for him, he was making Eli Manning still look like he could play. Well, Eli Manning won two Super Bowls. Yeah, won two Super against Bowls against Tom Brady, a Hall of Framer. How many years ago? We're talking Wait, about. I mean, well, when, when when he got traded to Cleveland. Is Eli Manning that same Eli Manning that won two Super Bowls? Yeah. And two Super Bowl MVPs? Yeah. No, no, not does he have the same name. Is he the same <laughs> Eli Manning? He's actually probably no. more, oh he's probably a um, bit better. Well, no, he wasn't the same Eli Manning. They were on the way of, you know, working his way out. He was on the tail end of his career. But the thing was, they didn't have a number two wide receiver at the time either. And Odell just, look. We all see the play, right? We all see the catch, the 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 behind the, and he's you know going out of nowhere and and making the grab. And pass interference, by the way, offensive pass interference. That's that's how Absolutely he made his Absolutely name, and, and 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 thousand plus you know uh, receiving yards a year in his first three seasons. I mean, again, thirty five touchdowns in the first three. You're averaging eleven. I mean, you're finding the end zone at a phenomenal rate, and then all of a sudden, after those three years they lose a couple of guys and then they picked up um god what was his name uh the guy who used to always do the salsa in the end zone victor cruz victor cruz and now all of a sudden victor cruz was the guy and odell was like oh screw that wow i'm out of here you know what i mean and now he's in cleveland and he was supposed to be the man in cleveland and then they went and got jarvis landry and what's jarvis landry doing all performing odell beckham so but Odell Beckham's thing. like, oh, man, thing, screw though. that. They had Landry first. Landry was there first. They brought Odell Beckham in. Okay. They thought, oh, well, they went to yep. school together. Jarvis Landry's kind of like a big And he had thing. a good first season. He had 1,000 yards in his first season and only found the end zone like two or three times. And now his first this season year, in Cleveland. This year, it's, gonna, it's, it's harder now for Odell because he's eight years in. He's not young anymore. Um, and I do think that you – know, He's at the end of his point, NFL career. To your point – we when we think Odell, we're still thinking that like super fast, like can't be guarded, yeah. crazy catch, one hand catches all over the place. But at the same time, it's like, yo, the Tennessee Titans want to do what? They want to run the football. But right. Andy Brown had no problem getting targets last year. And John he's not no young and healthy targets. anymore. He's he's not. He's old and hurt. But, he, but he's open. Young yeah. and healthy is not is is maybe he's not young and healthy, but he's open. That says enough. So are other players on the field though. Maybe, but again, when he's open, you're throwing picks, not throwing to other open players. Are you Odell Beckham, Jad? Because you're starting to sound like it a lot, a lot, like a lot. So, 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 so here are two things. So, usually, when an NFL player retires, it is not because they can't physically do the game anymore. They no longer want to mentally prepare for the game anymore. And Odell Beckham Jr. has not want to mentally prepare for the game for at least five years. Let's just be flat out honest. Ever since he's been in Cleveland, he has not wanted to mentally prepare for the game. That's why he's getting hurt. That's why he is doing this, this, and this, and this. And uh, and Joe, I see your comments here. I'm going to stutter all I want. So you can take it and shove a... Sp- I'm, uh, never mind. Uh, but, but, <laughs> but, 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 yeah, I mean, like... When you no longer mentally prepare, your drop rate goes from two percent in New York to ten percent in in Cleve in Cleveland. You know one thing a wide receiver never loses is their ability to catch the ball. It's 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 their hands. 
why is his drop rate going up so high then? Because he's mentally not in the game. No, you're right. You're right. And that's what I mean. It's like, it, it's, it's not all on Cleveland and it's definitely, but it's definitely not all on him either. And again, like I said, you want to say they're a running football team, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. They've got, they've got the best one, two, you know, when healthy, the best one, two combo, in my opinion, in, in football, as far as running backs are concerned. But there's no, you know, like I said, Tennessee has no problem getting their receivers the ball. The tight end that just got paid. Look, yeah. I'd take Odell in Chicago right now. I mean, I think I'd take Odell. You know, it's it's kind of hard because, like, you want to take him to a, a team that needs a receiver that he could be featured and get, get targets, but you also – if they're going to yeah, be you're gonna say you're going to say in have. Dallas. Is that what you're going to no, say? No, 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 no. no, no. Oh. <laughs> um, but they, but if they're a contender, they probably don't really need a receiver, right? So like, then you're like, okay, so now you got to go like to the to the edge. So you're talking about Patriots, Saints. The Saints just lost a quarterback for the year. Um, How so, about Arizona? So Arizona's already got Hopkins and AJ Green. They don't need. They don't need. And they just picked up Zach Ertz. They got Rondo Moore. They're trying to feature. They still got. Yeah. Like, they they don't they don't they don't need Odell, but. Chicago is not bad. Chicago's got New a young England? quarterback. I, I that's where I like. I like New England a lot, and I think Bill Belichick, Bill Belichick does a great job with with guys who are. I mean, look, I mean, yeah. he did a great job with Randy Moss when nobody wanted to touch Randy Moss because yep. of the things he was saying. They went out there and they were setting records. Yeah, I would for look, one season, right? As a fan, yeah. you know, one, you know, one, hey, one season. That's all it is. That's that's what I want to see. Sit him, get him, get Mac Jones, the target who. I mean, you can't. You know, he's still the talent's still there, right? And and, and what if, yeah. what if he gets traded and all of a sudden, boom, he 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 explodes again? Then we say, oh, we think he didn't have it because we've just seen nothing but injuries. That's all we hear about him now. But like, we don't really know if he. Well, that's the thing, though. I mean, he he hasn't gotten younger. He's gotten older, and injuries have been a problem. And now, if you're seeing more playing time, you're probably a little bit more prone to injury. I I just. That's where I like my concern lies. If you're going to go out and you're going to get an Odell Beckham after he clears waivers, no matter what team you are, whether you're Chicago, whether you're New England, whether you're, you know, where wherever you're at, if you're going to pick up Odell Beckham, you've got to get him with some sort of stipulation of, hey, you've got to play this many games in order to be guaranteed this much money because you just you're older and you, you can't stay healthy right now. So you've got to prove it. Our, well, him clearing waivers will get him a minimum contract, so I think that'll be yeah that'll be all right. Yeah, he'll yeah. probably end up sign, signing with the uh, Raiders too, right? And then drinking and no, I'm, I'm totally kidding. Uh, but guys, we <laughs> we are up against the next break here on the other side of the break. We got Would You Rather brought to you by Skull Candy headphones. Be sure to click on the link in the description. Save you guys twenty percent. As always, Kev, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week, man. Thank you guys. Have a good one. All right, guys, we'll be right back here on the Man Hour. Stay tuned.
And welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckhouse along with Brandon Combs. You can find us on Twitter at Man Hour underscore Buck and, of course, Man Hour underscore Combs. You can also find the Man Hour page at Man underscore Hour underscore Radio on the Twitter machine. Guys, Drew won the beanie giveaway tonight. So, Drew, make sure you scroll up and hit that link and claim your beanie, man. It's the new Beastie Meanie. Nobody has it yet because I literally just created it right before the show started. So, you'll be the first one to have it in your hands, Drew. So, big shout out to you guys. So, guys, we've been beating the drum with the Aaron Rodgers COVID thing, the Odell Beckham thing thing as well. And we got a little long-winded, so it is time to skip ahead a little bit in the show here, Combs. And we are going to talk about those Dallas Cowboys. Kev's Dallas Cowboys here, and the Dallas Cowboys took a, um, yeah, they took an ass-kicking on Sunday versus the Denver Broncos. They were down 30-0 to zero with about six minutes left in the game. They scored two late touchdowns to make it look respectable I guess like at the at the end of the day but the question is going to to say uh are the Cowboys still the best team in the NFC uh yeah I mean they're one of the NFC is loaded I wouldn't say they're the best team in the NFC they're the best team in the NFC East best team in the NFC is still the Arizona Cardinals and they went out and proved it again this weekend. But they're the best team in the NFC East. They're they're a top top five team in the NFC. Cowboys are. It's just a bad loss. I mean, it was you look. We we yesterday we watched the uh, the Buffalo Bills lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars. It happens. People get all bent out of shape over one loss. That's why it's a, a seventeen game season. You know, they're they'll be fine. They just. They went in, they they underestimated their opponent, and they got beat. So you're telling me that they are the best team in the East, which the East is easily the worst division in the NFL. And so we are going to take one game and roll it up and throw it out because uh, everybody has that one game in the in the NFL where they just don't show show up. It was Cincinnati versus the Jets last week. It was the Buffalo Bills versus the with the the J- J- Jets or the Jaguars. I can't remember who they played. Jaguars. The, yeah, and, and then it, it was the uh, who played the Jaguars. Who who the Jaguars beat? Right. I mean, like there are always those weeks where teams just forget to show up. And I think this week, Dak Prescott missing two weeks and maybe not being one hundred percent healthy finally caught up to them a little bit. Hands down, the Dallas Cowboys are the best team in the NFC still. They're better than your stupid Cardinals. They're better than the Bucs. They are, they are better than the Green Bay Packers. You can say whatever. What, what, Combs? Did you say that the Arizona Cardinals don't suck? The Arizona Cardinals are the worst team the in the The Arizona Cardinals just went into San Francisco, yeah. and I know San Francisco's record does not show greatness right now but they went into san francisco on the road in a division game and beat the 49ers with colt freaking mccoy exactly and deandre hopkins was on the sidelines hey where did a uh, colt mccoy go to college was that texas oh, yeah fuck, if you're about Does to tell it... me that colt mccoy is a good quarterback yeah he I is where to you right now Colt McCoy was the best Big 12 quarterback on that team, and it shows. Kyler Murray is overrated, guys. That's just the way it is. Kyler Murray is much like Lamar Jackson. A flash in the pan. Next year, he is going to be below average at best. So when you – Combs, we're going to go there, man. So so when you say the no, Cardinals no, – No, 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 no. We're – we – we are – no, you're going to go there. I am not going to go there. You're in this nonsense <laughs> by yourself. So you go ahead and carry on. So, so I mean, anybody can be anybody in any given Sunday, right? I mean, hell, Combs, you're you're right twice today. Soup Boss says I'm a used tampon. I mean, hell, <laughs> I, I was good like, 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 like at least one point in my life, right? Even though I'm used and washed up like Kyler Murray will be next year. I mean, it, it, like, I, I was still good at one point in time. The... 49ers guys are not that good. Yes, they had that Super Bowl run, but ever since they drafted Trey Lance and all the, and and all those injuries, for whatever reason, this injury bug has bitten them for like two years in a row now. It's absolutely crazy. So I see people in the comments saying, "Oh, 
the Cardinals are injured. Everybody's injured. It's week nine in the NFL season. Everybody's injured. Everybody's n- n- nail or like n- some type of nailing in- like injury. So the Dallas Cowboys are hands down better than the Cardinals. Yes, I know the Cowboys Cowboys defense is a, like a, like a, a little bit suspect at times. You know who else defense is a little bit suspect? Combs, the Kansas City Chiefs. That year they won the Super Bowl. I mean, the the Dallas Cowboys have a bend don't break mentality, and when they don't break, Diggs gets a t- he gets a interception and takes it for 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 like six. So this particular one game, the 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 Dallas Cowboys were not playing from a head. And that and that's how their defense thrives is when they're playing from ahead, they can take chances and they can do do all these chances. But with all that being said, the Cowboys are still the best team in the NFC. They're still going to represent the NFC and the Super Bowl versus the Kansas City Chiefs. And they're still going to lose the Super Bowl to the Kansas City Chiefs. Face it, Combs. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, maybe if Kyler Murray had sat last year, he'd be a great quarterback. No, two. Years, I mean, two I, years I, ago, right? I, I, I just, I, I fuck, uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they are eight and one now. Eight and one, and they just won a game with Colt freaking. McCoy. Okay, if you want to go that route, the Dallas Cowboys won a game with Co- freaking Cooper Rush. Yeah, and then it, it... fuck. They, the New York Jets won a game with McCoy, Mike freaking White. Not just Come Cole on, McCoy. We can but, do this all game long. But DeAndre Hopkins was on the sidelines. Okay, DeAndre Hopkins was on the sidelines. They were missing like their their uh, top running back got hurt and, and you know had an ankle injury. It like. They were facing so much, and they had so many reasons why they could have lost that game and a divisional game at that, but they didn't. They went out and they did what they do. They won game a game. Their defense is a top two defense in this league right now. Who the Cardinals or the, offense, or the Cowboys? The Cardinals. Okay. the 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 Arizona Cardinals are the best team in the NFC, and, and to uh, to even argue that right now, it seems like a little bit of a stretch. Okay. The Green Bay Packers are a close second. Right. The Cowboys, getting back to the Cow, the Cowboys are the fifth best team in the league. You've got the you've got the the Cardinals, you've got the Rams, you've got the Green Bay Packers, you've got the um Bucks. I'm trying to think uh yeah, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And then you've got the Cowboys. That's that's your top five, but the Cowboys the Cowboys aren't on Arizona level. They aren't on Tampa Bay level. They aren't on Green Bay level. They're a good team. They're not a great team. So you brought up the point that Arizona Cardinals were poor, poor playing with a bunch of backup versus a division foe, right? What about last on Thursday night? Road. Okay, yeah, okay. What about last Thursday night when Green Bay came into Arizona without any receivers like at all? They had like Kurt, like Kurt Angle's cousin. They had the like the, the Rock sister playing they wide receiver, the second best and they, quarterback of all time. Be they still, the they still had all difference. backup wide receiver the receivers. Of, uh, Tom Brady's played an entire career and won seven Super Bowls and ten tries with backup wide receivers. Give me a break. Weren't you Stop the one it. that said Tom He's Brady had elite best. talent? No, no, you are out. Uh, you better shut your freaking. You are right the one now. that said Tom Brady had that. elite, like elite talent, not Aaron Rodgers. But I digress on that. When Green Bay went into Arizona, I'm about to walk off this show. I <laughs> never said that. I never said that Tom Brady. I actually argued the exact opposite. You moron. Second of all, Tom, Aaron Rodgers is the second best quarterback of all time. It's a big difference. We, you're t- so you're telling me that the Green Bay Packers winning with Aaron Rodgers is the same thing. As as the Carol as the Arizona Cardinals winning with Colt McCoy, yeah, pretty much because at least they still had receivers. I mean, when you're getting the Cardinals still have receivers too without DeAndre Hopkins. Don't get it twisted. The yeah. Cardinals have a very good wide receiver. Exactly, court, but DeAndre Hopkins is a huge 
huge, huge playmaker for them. So when so you say Devontae Adams and coming. Lazard and St. Pierre, Paul, or whatever the guy's name is, was like gone, the top three receivers on your team are out because of COVID? I mean, something doesn't add up. But it's the Green Bay Packers. It's Aaron Rodgers. He can do anything he wants, yada, yada, yada. But yet, those same receivers were back, and they got their ass whooped by Kansas City, right? Fuck. Come on, man. You... Uh... Speaking of the Kansas City Chiefs, the Kansas City Chiefs won back-to-back games, Colin, for the first time ever this season. Yay! Go Chiefs, go! I'm just kidding. But are the Kansas City Chiefs back, Combs? Are they back to their old Kansas City Chiefs ways that we know them for the last three or four years? Fuck, I can't. Like, I, I don't... I don't even know what to say to you. I'm kind of... I'm going to read in the comments now. I, I'm agreeing with all of our fans. You, you eat moldy bread as a plate cleanser a palate cleanser i should say you are like i don't understand where you are coming from with some of the stuff you are saying right now the what Kansas do you City chiefs are 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 no they're not back if if aaron Rodgers plays yesterday they lose that game 31 to 13 they've got a lot of holes in kansas city a lot of holes. The defense played well. The defense played well, but it was still Jordan Love. Um, and he did not look good yesterday. I this Kansas City Chiefs team, I can't figure out what is going on with them. I just can't. I don't know if if the rest of the league has caught up to them, which is what I really, to be honest with you, at this point, that's what I believe. I believe the rest of the team is the league has caught up to the Kansas City Chiefs and they can no longer be the dominant team that we expected them to be. I think that the Kansas City Chiefs are in real trouble. I I I I mean you've got to go to Las Vegas and play against a team that notoriously has your number now. They close it, it, that, that's week the, eight on. Yeah, it well. But this is a team that notoriously has your number. You're going to play them in a primetime game. Then you've got to play the Cowboys, who we just talked about being a top five team in the NFC. You think they're the best team in the NFC. Then you get the Broncos, who just showed up and and, and beat up on um, uh, the best team in the NFL. Stop it. And then you get the Raiders again. And then you get the Chargers, the Steelers, the Bengals, and then the Broncos one more time. You've got a, a not a powder puff schedule coming up for to close out your season. The Chiefs are in trouble. The Chiefs are right now, I would say, if they get 10 wins, they're going to be lucky. Like, it's the way they are playing football, unless they return to form really, really quick, and that just doesn't... At this point in the season, what are we? We're, we're heading into the, this is week nine, right? Yeah, we're heading into week 10. Yep. Yep. So you're, you are kind of what your record says you are at this point. Like, you right. know what you're getting. And I know that's, you know, sometimes that's not always true because, look, if their record was what they said they were last year, the Pittsburgh Steelers would have won a playoff game, right? Because they started out 12 and 0. Right. But at, at this point, when you're playing the way that the Kansas City Chiefs are, we kind of know who you are. We kind of see what's going on. And that is that the rest of the league has caught up to you. The rest of the league has figured you out. Okay. So before I lose my mind, I'm going to take some. <laughs> you ju- you said heading into the show that hashtag bench Patrick Mahomes was trending on Twitter. Yeah. So go ahead and lose your mind all you want. So, so before we get into too carried away, and I absolutely lose my mind on these Steve Spagmola and the defense, the Patrick Mahomes, et cetera, and Brittany Matthews and stupid Joshua Matthew Mahomes or whatever his stupid name is. With 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 that with that being said, when Kevo said, "Are the Bengals nine and seven, or is their team nine and seven? Says 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 seven right, and then he said, "Well, they play a fourth a fourth place schedule, so they're five and four. Like you know, doesn't really sh- show how good or how bad they are, right? Well, the Kansas City Chiefs have a first place schedule, right? I mean, they've been in the Super Bowl back to back to back or back to back years and and three times AFC Championship shit games. So obviously they have a tough s- schedule, rightfully show, but 
Here is the problem with the Kansas City Chiefs. Last year, all those bad throws that Patrick Mahomes was making, Tyree Kill was catching the ball. We saw Tyree Kill running down the field wide open, uh, burn two guys, right? Patrick Mahomes overthrew him by like 15 yards. Absolutely ridiculous. Last year, they were making that throw. We we <laughs> we we seen him throw the ball behind Travis Kelsey. Yes, it hit him, then it hands it. It probably counts as a drop. But we seen him make that throw last year as well. I do pleasure myself a lot. But <laughs> with that being said, the real defense is on the or sorry, the real problem is on the defensive side of the ball. The real defense is it, it's it's Sorson. Sorson's is a piece of shit. He is garbage. Ever since he took that cheap shot on the re, on the wide receiver in the Super Bowl, I don't think he's made a made a tackle since. It should have been a shutout, but he wants to overrun Randall Cobb and make him look like a great receiver that he once was when he's like 57 years like 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 years old now. With with that being said, how do you fix the Kansas City Chiefs, Combs? Do you ask that? Ask that, please. How do you fix the Kansas City Chiefs? Bitch, Patrick Mahomes! Bitch his ass, put in freaking Chad Henney, because Patrick Mahomes is the worst freaking quarterback in the goddamn league. You cannot throw the ball sidearm in every freaking play and expect your shoulder not to hurt. Oh, mommy, massage my shoulder. Tweet that the guys are hurting me too hard, mommy. Shut the hell up. Tell your mama to pull her dodo out of her ass and start playing like a $100 million quarterback that you are. This guy is fucking garbage right now, Combs. I would take Lamar Jackson over Patrick Mahomes in a heartbeat right now because at least Lamar Jackson throws shows some heart. Patrick Mahomes, ever since he signed his $100 million deal, he has been complete dog shit, Combs. He threw 150 yards. Jordan Love outperformed him on Sunday. Let's just be flat out honest. You can say what you want to say. Hashtag bench Mahomes. Matter of fact, release him right now. Trade him for Deshaun Watson in a heartbeat. Deshaun Watson for Patrick Mahomes. Hashtag bench Mahomes. Hashtag fire Steve Steve Spagnola. And Honey Badger, go back to Arizona. We don't want you either. Toxic fans, fuck you. Do you feel better now? No. Bench Patrick Mahomes is your take. Yep. Wake his ass up. What do they do to uh, players when they're in like a shooting stump? Bring them off the bench, right? When a what? when a baseball player's batting 137, what do they do? They trade him to the Atlanta Braves and he becomes World Series MVP. Bench him. What? Why? Wake his ass up. Make him earn his keep. Make him earn that $100 million of the dollars. I mean, they they won the game, Buck. They've won two games in a row. Oh, congratulations. We, we, we talk about it in the NFL all the time. You're right. A win's a win. A, a win is a win. And a win is a win. You beat the team that's in front of you. And whether you win 13 to 7 or you win 64 to 3, a win is a win. So I don't. Like, I don't understand the the bench Patrick Mahomes thing. Look, is he playing out of this world? No. Is he playing MVP caliber football right now? No, absolutely not. How about this? Is he playing a hundred million dollars right at right now? Let's 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 break it down. Buck. Is he Buck. worth twenty million dollars a season right now? Buck. His defense has given up more points than any defense in the league this year. They did last year too. And the year before that. You can only sustain that for so long. And the rest of the league has caught up to what they're doing. They've caught up to the game plan. They've caught up to the scheme. They know what they're doing. It doesn't mean that Patrick Mahomes all of a sudden like went from, you know, the what they're calling the the Hall of Famer Patrick Mahomes to the nobody who can't do anything Patrick Mahomes. He just Look, the league has caught up. The league has figured out what they're doing. And until they change up the game plan, and until Andy Reid learns how to manage up game clock, until Andy Reid learns how to change up his play calling, until Andy Reid learns how to, to figure out what is going on right now and fix this offense like a head coach should, 
And that's always been a knock on Andy Reid, right? The the yeah. time management thing has always been a, a, a knock on Andy Reid, right. but it's still a knock. But they, the rest of the league has caught up to them. Patrick Mahomes is still a phenomenal quarterback, mm. but right now the defensives have figured out how to sustain that, how to how what to do in order to slow them down, and at the same time that they figured out how to slow them down. They are scoring at a phenomenal rate. Now, yesterday, that didn't happen, obviously, with Jordan Love. But in the games prior, you're talking about a defense that gave up 29, 35, 30. I'm sorry, 36, 30, 30, uh, 38, 13, 27, 20, and now 7. So this defense is not doing its job either. So at the same time you're 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 struggling offensively because the rest of the league has caught up to you, your defense is also allowing everybody to just blow them by. And that's your problem. I mean, they're the the Kansas City Chiefs have a real problem, and I don't think it's going away anytime soon. So yeah, I mean the defense is fire Steve Spagnola too. So the real question from this game is that Jordan Love did start the game. And we spoke with Wayne G last Thursday when the whole COVID thing broke out with Aaron Rodgers and whatnot. And Wayne G said you should sit Aaron Rodgers for the rest of the season because you want to know what you have in Jordan Love moving next year since Aaron Rodgers will not be on the team. Do you agree with Wayne G that they should sit Aaron Rodgers for the, for the rest of the season? No, I, I think that's uh <sighs> Wayne G is, is a very smart person. I know Wayne G personally, and sometimes though he says some crazy stuff, right? Like like the Patriots are gonna win the division over the Buffalo Bills. And now the the Packers should sit Aaron Rodgers. Did you see what happened to them? You know, all this stuff we're talking about the Kansas City Chiefs right now. They still lost to them yesterday. Right. This 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 team defense that is giving up points at a phenomenal clip, you were only able to put up seven without Aaron Rodgers. That with Aaron Rodgers, you win that game. Thir- there is no way the Green Bay Packers, if the Green Bay Packers did Aaron Rodgers for the rest of the year, the, the like they might as well just go ahead and sell the team. They might as well just go ahead and move out of Green Bay because those fans are going to burn down the city. Like it is, it's you, you it makes zero sense to sit Aaron Rodgers. Zero sense. Uh, so, uh, so let me ask you this, this in like a different way. Let's say Jordan Love did go throw for the 400 yards that, that you wanted him to do. Would this be a different conversation? Should we maybe a, Maybe would that have changed your mind a little bit? If what? Say if, it one more time. If Jordan Love would have went for the 400 yards, three scores, and the win, would that have changed your mind of what Wayne G said? No. I, I would have loved to have seen it because I would have loved to have seen what the uh, what the Packers fans did to Aaron Rodgers. Do they turn on him or do they sit? But no, you don't. <laughs> you don't sit Aaron Rodgers. If, if the NFL suspends him, that's that's a totally different thing. The NFL suspends him for two or three games or decides to find him and, and he wants to throw a temper tantrum like he likes to do. That's a different story. But you don't willingly sit Aaron Rodgers and let Jordan Love ruin your season because I'm telling you, and I said this earlier in the show, with Aaron Rodgers – or I'm sorry, without Aaron Rodgers, right now they are seven and two. Without Aaron Rodgers, they finish the season seven and nine. Hmm. Maybe that's their goal. Maybe they need one to draft in their quarterback. <laughs> it's, it's possible. <laughs> I mean, they they certainly don't do anything to help their quarterbacks out. I mean, look, I I love chaos, especially ensuing chaos with the Green Bay Packers. As a Bears fan, I would love nothing more than to watch that franchise implode. But I, they're they're smarter than that. They're they're a really well run franchise, and they'll do the right thing. They'll they'll they will not bench Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, uh, they are very well owned by Tori Anderson as well. Just want to point that out there. 
Well, the city, they are the only fan, like the fans do own that team, right? It's not uh, they don't really have an. I don't know it, say, if it's the they? fan or if, it, or if it's like the city, but the but Tory has like a, what yeah. like a point zero. They don't have like a personal owner, right? Like they don't <laughs> yeah, have uh, yeah. They don't have a Virginia McCaskey or they don't have a you know right yeah. They don't have a person to point at. It's they the they city. do have a GM though. That, Basically, you know. if you buy a house in in Green Bay. <laughs> you become part owner of the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, I'm really not for sure how that works, but, I mean, like, it, it is cool that you, I'm like, going like you can... to buy stock. <laughs> I'm going to go buy a house in Green Bay this summer just so I can trade Devontae Adams to the Bears. Let's do it. Let's do it. And right. uh, and then hire uh, Ryan Pace as their general manager, right? Yes, and Matt Nagy's <laughs> going to be their head coach. And then they're going to draft missile tr- or trade for Missile Trubisky. And, be and, and I'm going to get John Fox to be their offensive coordinator. <laughs> All right, Combs, do you have YouTube pulled up by by chance, man? I do. Let's go through some of those comments because the chat was on fire tonight. B, I was, before I we was go to the Combs, dying. Before we go to the Combs eye test here about five, ten minutes or like or so, let's go through some of those com- comments and see what people are saying. Oh, my God. There are so many. So, Chad, uh, Soup Boss has just been destroying you. Yeah, by I the know. Way. He said you're a used tampon. Uh, Drew said those are called jelly fills. Um, <laughs> what? Je- like jelly fill d- d- donuts? Yeah. You know, uh, I like I, the used like the used tampon thing. That's pretty good. That was a good one. Used tampon um, merch coming soon. Um, <laughs> I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Then, uh, Buck eats moldy bread as a palate cleanser. Um, Can you do that? Wouldn't moldy moldy bread give you like massive diarrhea? I, I do. I have no clue. Um, <laughs> then Supa says, "Buck, go home. You're drunk." I am home. Uh, says, he, he also says, "You're a dumbass." That's my um, wife told me the same thing. Buck pledges himself to his own takes when he edits the show. <laughs> that one. Dude, I laughed out loud when I read it. I didn't even mean to. You're in the middle of talking, and I just like busted out laughing. Yeah, as, as soon as um, I because like I see it a little before be before it comes through, so I can like like approve it or like a like or not. And I saw it, I was yeah. like, oh man, he he got me good there. <laughs> super, super agrees with me that the difference is the defense knows how to cover the routes now. The defenses are catching up to the Kansas City Chiefs. So I completely agree. So just how Odell Beckham Jr.'s dad's editor showed you 11 minutes of him being wide open, I could show you yeah. a, like 11 minutes of Tyree Kill being wide open and Patrick Mahomes over throwing him or uh, under throwing him too. Okay. I, I mean, I'd have to see it to believe it. But, I mean, uh, maybe not 11 said, minutes, Buck but definitely like 11 making, times. Buck is making Stephen A. Smith sound like a genius. Dude. That, that was a uh, soup boss. That hurts a little bit. <laughs> Buck, did your dominatrix beat you too hard over the head with this jumbo dong today? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Spilled soup said, coming yes, up she, Wednesday, guys. Stay tuned. <laughs> you said yes, she was evil last night, and he said he, not she. <laughs> <laughs> Just coughing the slides in, boys. Just coughing the slides in. Uh, too soon then uh soup boss says wayne g makes the same house cleanser as you do buck smokes the same house cleanser as you do yeah um drew <laughs> says if rogers played yesterday they would have killed the chiefs i agree you know i think it would have been a different game because i like like uh, sitting back and thinking on it now like it's kind of like patrick mahomes is playing down to his competition because we saw yeah. him like week one and week two, you know, he was like he was performing right versus the which versus the uh, Browns and then the Baltimore, right? But like since then, like they kind of had that. What ever since game four, they've kind of had like an easier schedule, like air yeah. quotes there, right? So maybe he's playing down to his competition, you know, thinking like he doesn't need to prepare as much or. Or like the team as a whole doesn't think they need to prepare as much. L- lulling the uh, the league to sleep and then just gonna go off on them. Well, I mean, like I wouldn't say that, but 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 kind of like making a business decision not to go one hundred percent every like every play because yeah. is it because it is a seventeen I mean, game. Possible. I mean, I mean, like me as a Chiefs fan, like I'm I'm trying to pad it a little bit. I mean, obviously, I I like my quarterback. I like the Honey Badger. F the defense coordinator steve spagnola he's complete trash but 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 everybody else mean like i generally like them besides chris jones i don't know why we gave his big ass a hundred million (laughs) dollar deal but i digress but but like like there are 
they almost remind me of the Lakers or, you know, or, or like a, or like a love or like a Le, LeBron James team in general. Like they are, they're expecting just to sneak into the playoffs and they flip us and they flip on a switch. Right. So, right. Right. I mean, I mean, you know, I, I, I just think that I feel like the league has caught up to them. I don't know. I, we'll see as the season goes on. We'll see what happens this weekend in Las Vegas. It's a big game for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, it is. It, it's actually because uh, I think they're tied for second right now, right? If yeah. I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, I mean, it'd it be, it, it be for a tie for the division league because I believe the Chargers are off this week. Yeah. So. So then Drew says, uh, did McCaskey know Jesus as a kindergartner? She did. She was actually his babysitter. Um, yeah. I don't know how much she got paid back then, but <laughs> yeah, Virginia McCaskey definitely knew Jesus as a kindergartner. Yeah. And you know what? Even back then, she still would not hire a black coach. I don't know what was, what was going on. Um, so then Drew says, uh, I don't know. This, this is soup boss. Your takes are diarrhea. Uh, Havoc six nine two seven says. So, what was Mahomes doing against the Titans? I mean, the Titans are overrated. Let's just be flat out honest. They've they've had a pretty easy schedule. Uh, they should have been dropping five games in a lot like in a row. They just lost Derrick Henry and went out and won yeah. a game yesterday. Just like I said, everybody in, in Week Nine forgot to show up. But the Colts, if Carson Wentz went to throw in a stupid ass interception for like negative two yards or whatever, whatever it was, which Matthew Stafford threw the same exact interception, which is kind of hilarious, right? Back to back weeks. I mean, the Colts yeah. would have won that game uh, if Matthew Stafford wouldn't have thrown that interception. The Rams probably would have won as well. So, I mean, Titans are getting lucky right now. That's just Drew, the way it is. Drew says, "Didn't Mahomes roll his ankle earlier in the season? Wonder if he hurt his foot again." Uh, I don't think he hurt his ankle by any means, but he did like it was like his hamstring or something like 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 that versus the Ravens. I thought, but yeah, but hey, uh, then Drew yeah. says they beat the Rams. Hello, yeah, like I said, everybody e- 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 even Who a blow clock. The, uh, the uh, Titans beat the Rams last night. Yeah, uh, nineteen sixteen. So did the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah. But, it, it, dude, they shut down the Rams, man. They the Rams offense, just forgot to show up. I mean, it's just simple as that. Dude, I needed that. I needed that for fantasy last night. I really did. Suit now, says now beat I'm the Rams. And I've got to depend on Justin Fields to help me out tonight. Wow, relied on your boy. Imagine that. Maybe if he would have said it, you you wouldn't have to really, really, really rely on him. Shut up, Buck. Are you ready for your eye test, Combs? I am ready for my eye test. I don't have the jingle yet, but let's do it. All right. So the Combs eye test. (sighs) This week, I am going to talk, and I'm just going to give a shout out. I am going to give a shout out to the Monk Greenwood girls eighth grade basketball team. We finished our season this year as the third best team in the league. Uh, this was a basketball team that you know hadn't won very many games over the last few years um but this year i mean these girls just they developed they they went out there they played their butts off um and, and i couldn't be any more proud of these girls watching the way that they grew from the beginning of the season all the way to the end of the season their basketball iq and what they can do i'm excited to see what these girls can do in high school um, and I was very honored to be a, a part of, of their season. So to all the girls out there, to, to Aubrey, to Lily, to um, trying to remember all the girls' names. Sorry if I forget anybody. Mia Bella, Alana, Sophia. Uh, God, I know I'm missing somebody. Natalie and Emily. There we go. I got them all. You guys are, are the best, and uh, I wish you nothing but the best, and I hope that you guys go through life as hard as you did on the basketball court. I, I hope you guys just destroy everything in your path and 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 make it what you want to be. So do what you got to do. Combs, can I tell That's you some, some, something, man? What? We've been doing the show together now for about a year. Like We're like 250 episodes odes, odes in, in right now. Just, just like you and me, right? Mm-hmm. I have seen you grow as a father, as a person, as like a human being so much. And like in the last year, 
And this time last year, don't take this the wrong way whatsoever. You would have not have said that the way you said it. And it's it, it, no, it, but just, like, like, you know, just like it made me want to cry just because just because like I know, like as a dad, like I know how proud you are feeling right now. And I mean, it's just it's simply just amazing seeing the growth. Yes, yeah, you know. I pre- I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, you know, it, it, it is, it's, it's different, you know, um, you know, I, you know, Aubrey is, is, she's my daughter. I mean, I, she's, you know, uh, people say, well, you know, she's your son. No, she's, she's my daughter. I, I'm with her every day. I help raise her. I do the things that I got to do for her. So there's no, uh, step there's no anything like that she's she's my kid and I'll, I'll do anything for her and it was fun to watch her go through through what she went through this year so so drew takes this moment and does it in typical man our nation are you, you going to kiss now or what <laughs> come on drew we're trying to have yes. a moment here man and then havoc says the titans are are the most injured team and six and zero against the playoff teams buck you're just still butthurt yeah whatever man it is what it is. Do you know who Havoc is? Like, what's his real name? I don't know. No clue. But he's a Titans oh, fan, right. I guess. Apparently. Apparently. Clearly a Titans fan. We'll see you in the playoffs, man. We'll, we'll see how you do. Derrick Henry should, should be you, back you by the playoffs. You might see him in the playoffs. You might see the playoffs. You're right. That's that's a might. Call him. Send us out, big guy. <laughs> man Hour Nation. Rise up. <laughs> <laughs>